What's up, everyone? We are live at 5. It is Thursday, January 17th, and I'm Paul Wontor. And I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And over there is Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And hey, a real little showstopper is here yes. today. Tommy Brocco, Tommy Brocco from Broadway's Pretty Women is Woo. here. You know him. You love him. Yes. Uh, any Newsies fans? Hello. Uh, we love Tommy Brocco. We're going to talk to him all about Pretty Women. They're having a really exciting week right yes, now. Yes, seriously. But first, today's top five. got one word to say and it's bazinga very cute thank you yeah so we <laughs> found out today that the big bang theory is being turned into a musical so this will be on the heels of the office a musical parody mm -hmm. friends a musical parody sex in the city a one woman show yeah, saved by the bell a musical parody we're having the big wait what's the exact title the exact title is uh, okay, The Big Bang Theory, a pop rock musical parody. And this is going to debut at the Jerry Orbach Theater off Broadway on February 28th. And, uh, you yeah, know, I have to confess something. Yeah. I've never seen The Big Bang Theory. Neither so like I. I remember when I started in Times Square, I used to see those T-shirts and oh, be like Bazinga. a picture of Jim Parsons, and it said Bazinga, and I'm like, yeah. I don't like. So you just you just actually connected it. I for know. Me. I saw I'm an welcome. act of God, and I saw Boys in the Band. Those are my Jim. Oh, and but, I saw right, exactly. I know yeah. it was legitimate yeah. theatrical credits. Yes, <laughs> but I have not seen Big Bang Theory. I, I, I mean, you it's know, about a bunch of nerds. I was What's it about? researching it today. It about? It Do you know that like Maya Bialik, who played Young Bette Midler in Blossom. Beaches, is in it? Like, Blossom's oh, in yeah, it. Oh yeah, obviously. Yeah. I'm like, what is going on? But, but they're the not, kids they're love not it. Going, yeah. It's a big hit. It's a big and hit. What's it about? It's it's about you have it a down bunch. Down. I'm, I'm leading of, you into yes. your notes. It's, it, okay, it's all good. <laughs> it's about a bunch of science geeks who geeks. have spent 12 years finding love and experimenting with space age theory until their lives are turned upside down by their favorite Star Trek character come to life. That's what it's about. That's what it's that's about. What that's what the shows. shows that's Tommy what... Brocco, do you watch it? No. That's nope. not what the TV oh, show is about. Nope. Oh, it's not? Well, maybe that's what the musical that's what the is mu about. The okay. Musical's okay. About. Okay, cool. Because this is a parody of yeah, the it'll television be fun. show. Yeah, guys. It'll be fun. Check it out starting February 28th. It's a woman's world, and we're just living in it. Oh. Full Monty Drama. reference. Thank you. According to Elsa and Anna. Yes. Right? So um, Disney on Broadway did this last year. They had Women's Day on Broadway. And they're going to do it again Ooh. because everybody loved it. Uh, I think it's like a live panel, right? Mm -hmm. They, I, I yeah. remember last year, Casey Levy uh, and Patty Muren were yeah, a big part of it. And it's going to happen once again at the St. James Theater, home of Frozen, on March 12th. It is called Women's Day on Broadway, colon, Inspiring Changemakers. Cool. Which is also the name of Patty Mirren's Twitter feed, Inspiring Change Makers. I, like that. I love that. I mean, yeah, she, isn't that what for she's sure. all about. I love that. She's all about it. Yeah. Uh, so this year's event will focus on change makers, driving progress within the theater and entertainment industry. It's going to be amazing. There's going to be great speakers. We don't know who any of them are. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll find, we'll find out, out eventually. Yeah. We'll find out. We have a couple months. They're, they're going to yeah. invite people. Mm -hmm. And Riverdale is visiting the candy shop. So this is pretty exciting. Um, last year, CW's Riverdale did a Carrie-themed yeah, episode. Yeah, they do musicals yeah, so at Riverdale High. They sure do. So now we found out that they're doing a, an episode based off of Heather's The Musical, the musical that was based off of the famous 1983 film. So um, they do dark musicals, Yes, basically, dark musicals. Over Riverdale High, because yes. it's a dark TV show. It's the yeah. Archie, the Archie there show. There we go. Uh, so this episode will air on March 20th on the CW. We don't have any other info right now, but if you love Tethers, the movie or the musical, tune in. It was just a big hit in London. They just did it yeah, over there. I wonder certainly. when it's going to come back to New York. Yeah. I mean, Mean Girls, Heathers. Yeah. They could just do it with the same cast and repertory, can't they? No kidding. Well, they have Barrett, obviously. But big fan. I that? like that idea. Can't yeah. you do it? It's kind of like you could also do That's Legally really Blonde smart. and Clueless <gasps> in repertory oh if you God. really want Legally to. Blonde. But we need a revival. Throwing it out out there. There. Did you see Clueless? Yeah. I loved it so much. Did it's you? It closed on Sunday. I loved it so much. It's a lot of fun. They basically re, not to like change the subject, yeah. they re lyricized all these 90s songs yeah. to kind of fit the storyline. Like Backstreet Boys. And I just thought and... it was so fun and nerdy and very theatrical. I had such a good time. But watching it as a musical, because a lot of these musicals remind me of Legally Blonde. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's face that's, it, yeah, because that's it's true. just similar sort of palette. Yeah. But um, I kept thinking Cher th yes. was basically Elle Woods. It's. It's like a prequel to Legally Blonde. I feel oh, like Cher right. and Elwood are the same person. That's like really first she goes to her clue, and then Act Two she goes to college and yeah, meets Orphe. Like that. <laughs> That's cool. I knew Tommy Brock would laugh I love at that. that. Oh, I goodness. love that. Go go Joe to Feinstein's Fifty Four Below. 
So we love a reunion, right? We love a reunion. You're really excited about I'm this one. I'm so excited. <laughs> you just lit up. I was just telling Paul, do you mind if I jump in? Jump so, in. We're the, jumping on the each other. The first show. production of Joseph and the Amazing Cat Declare Dreamcoat that I ever saw was the 93 revival on Broadway. And I just loved it. I was so yeah. fascinated by how Andrew Lloyd Webber kind of retold this Bible story through all of these like vastly different styles of music. And Kelly Rapke was the narrator. And she's so she's beautifully big, voiced. Fantastic belt Oh, my yeah. goodness. And, and Mark Kudish. Mark Kudish was in there. I think he was Ruben. Yeah, yeah. So that was his first guys. Broadway show, I believe. Was it? No way. I believe. Um, so they're reuniting. Yeah. Kelly Rapke. Yeah. Mark Kudish. Uh, Matt Zarley, who's fantastic. Um, except Michael Damien's not on the list. He was Joseph. Not. Right. Michael Damien, look him up. He's Joseph. Right. He's fantastic. Uh, anyway, but but we love this score. We love Literally. this cast. It's going to be great. January 28th at 7 p.m. and 9.30 p.m., and that was the only Broadway revival of Joseph? Yep, that's the truth. You know, we were just saying right before he walked in, maybe Tommy Brocco should do the next revival. That would be amazing. Go, 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 Tommy. Kill it. <laughs> Come on, guys. We got a fist And it's the it. final countdown. There we go. So yeah. as we know... Is it the final countdown? It is the final, final countdown. countdown. These shows, you know, it's funny. These shows announced they're closing like so, so far in advance is. now. It really is That it feels final. like... It's, yeah. I mean, I've been looking at on my office window. I can yeah. look at School of Rock, there and it's go. been saying Final Countdown forever. Oh man, it truly is now. But so now it is officially. It really final. is. <laughs> this coming Sunday night, School of Rock is playing their final Broadway performance. Um, but we got some cool news today. We found out that dozens of former young cast members are coming back to kind of rock out on stage. Are they like in college now? Um, are they married? No, it hasn't been that long. Yeah, they very likely might be. Who knows, man? Probably um, not. They're just still kids. But they're all going to be on stage during what I assume would be in the final number, the curtain call, to kind of rock out with the current cast. Sure. So that's a great reason to check out the show during its final performance this Sunday evening. Oh, I wonder if people can get tickets to the final performance. Yeah, who knows? And if not, see it before that or see it on tour. That's right. It's still on tour. Yes. It was a big hit for Android Weber. Oh, totally. Yeah. It's almost kind of a similar sensibility as Joseph, like rockish music. He's trying yeah. to bring up Tying Joseph. Tying it all together. I, I love Joseph. <laughs> trying to bring up Joseph again. Uh, okay. Thank you, you so bet, much, dude. Andy. My pleasure. You have a good It's nice to see yeah, you here. Yeah, you too, a man. A guest spot yeah. on Live <laughs> 5. Uh, hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell everybody about today's guest? Gladly. We have Tommy Brocco in the studio with us today. He's currently appearing as the scene-stealing bellhop in Pretty Woman. His New York stage credits include Newsies on Broadway and The Hairy Ape at the Park Avenue Armory. He has been seen on screen in Newsies, The Musical Live, Fourth Man Out, and Nurse Jackie. Follow him on social media at Tommy Brocco and leave all of your questions in the comments down below. Please welcome Tommy and Paul. What's up, Tommy Brocco? How's it going? So good. So happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for having me, everybody. It's a beautiful space, beautiful office. Good to have Feels you. Feels good, you know? Beautiful it, mugs. Yeah, beautiful <laughs> mugs. I got a t-shirt. Yeah. You know, this merch. place screams success. Merch. It's good. It's a good vibe. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to have you. Yay. How are things over at the Nederlander? Oh, my You're gosh. No, you know, best. you are known now for stopping the show at the Nederlander. This is like something you do. Thank you. <laughs> you, you well, you were, I, I first knew you from Newsies. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Who would you play in Newsies? I played Spot Conlon, the Brooklyn Newsies. Yes, of course. Brooklyn, baby. Because you actually, you are, you live where? I live in Staten Island. You're I grew a proud, up in New Yorker, yeah. Yeah, you're a proud Staten Island boy. Yeah, but uh, my whole family, they all grew up in Brooklyn, and then they moved to Staten Island, uh, and then started the family. So right. we're all really from Brooklyn. Right, so it's you really fit right in for that yeah. role. You were like, yeah, this is, and, and you can dance, like you have crazy dance skills. Thank like you. Like crazy. <laughs> um, and and uh, an aside, we'll get to Pretty Woman, but an aside, you were just fantastic in a course line. Thank you so at, much. At City oh, Center. Oh that was gosh. such a, you could do that. <laughs> You can do that. He did Thank that. You. He was like, he can do Thanks that. He I did it. That. That. What's his yeah. name? <laughs> Mike Costa. Mike. <laughs> I can do that. Da, 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 da. Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah. It was the best. It that was, was a that was a fantastic highlight production. of my career, honestly. Really? Yeah. I will never forget. Uh, you know, we're all facing upstage when the the show the curtain comes yeah. up. We're facing upstage, feet together, hands at the sides, and you hear the audience erupt. And you feel them, their mm. energy. You could feel them, and it like it shoot. When I think about it, I, it shoots chills throughout my and body. And that music, and that music, and then kicks the music in. starts, and we're we're in yeah. for two two hours. Yeah. Was it a, a hard marathon. show to do? Yes, yeah. so hard. Oh my gosh, I'm not kidding. Like it's it 
like means so much to all of us yeah. that show yeah, but yeah. uh even just like talking about it it's like a wave comes over me of i remember what it was like to be there and it was it was indescribable the feeling um i'll never forget it so you know that that last scene it just gets you every time yeah. the the elimination scene it's yeah. insane i know you, and you know going through those emotions i've never had to do that as an actor on stage ever so to be given that opportunity from by york and bob and to have to live that moment for one week mm -hmm. which is not that much time right. but it felt like an eternity yeah. i don't know if i could have done it much longer yeah. and <laughs> it's you like, got to wear the gold uh what is it polyester what is that gold stuff the gold that costume at the end that it's gold iconic. beautiful it's pure gold actually <laughs> it's pure gold. Karat gold yeah <laughs> amazing i hope you got a lot of like selfies in that oh and, yes yeah. i did i've seen some of them on your social media <laughs> anyway pretty woman big yes oh, the back best at, back at the nederlander yeah um and you what's the name of the guy you're playing the i Bell play Hall? julio Julia. Yes. No, he's not a Brooklyn. Well, or what is well it's he's, funny I mean, because... I mean, you're in L.A., you're in Beverly no, Hills. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's funny because the character was named Julio, and then I right. came in. So Giuseppe Bausilo, he originated the role in did The Lab. Did he come see it? Did he? Did he? Yeah, he... he saw it in Chicago. Okay. He, he's doing Hamilton out there. Okay. So he was doing Hello, Dolly, and he couldn't do Pretty Woman. So then they had No, I meant the guy from the movie. The... I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. came. He Wasn't yes. he there, too? Yes, I'm sorry. he I'm, came. I'm, Patrick I'm, Richwood. He's I'm amazing. Confusing, I'm confusing no, 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 it's stories. All good. But, right, um, so you're saying when the musical was like in development, Yeah, when it was, it was in development, it was Julio. It. And then when I came in, they changed it to Julio because <laughs> okay. uh, our writer, JF, was like, Jerry, do you hear this guy talk? Like, there's no way we can't call him Julio. We're gonna, they're gonna rip us apart. We gotta change it. So, thus, Julio was born. Got it. Uh, so, have you worked? You never worked with Jerry Mitchell before, have you? Or have no, you done like this, anything with no, him? No, this was the first, and he's the best too. So, he's... how did this come about? How you you must have known? Uh, <sighs> did you know that this was sort of like a little spotlight? It, it almost feels like one of those roles that probably during the development it kind of became bigger it did and because it the did. audience really loves it did. julio it's the best i'm so grateful uh you know it's really crazy the way that this the whole story of how pretty woman came to be uh it had been three years since i booked a broadway show after newsies and i did the newsies movie i did the harry ape mm -hmm. i did pirates of penzance i was working mm -hmm. um but i didn't book a broadway show and it's that that feeling of not knowing what's next not knowing if there will be a next yeah. one it was so real and devastating. Yeah. Um, so I remember I was with my friend. We were going to dinner. We were going to see one of my best friends, Adam Kaplan, do a Bronx Tale. Mm -hmm. uh, we know him. That night. He's yeah, watching. We know him. Yeah, we He's know watching. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Adam, um, yeah. So we were going to see him that night, and I was with. I was at dinner with my friend Dina, and uh -huh. we were. I was just. I was in tears, talking mm -hmm. to her like, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. So. The point of the story is the next day I had an audition for Pretty Woman. And so I'm crying to my good friend. And then I say to her, but I have an audition tomorrow and I have a great feeling. Cut to us leaving the restaurant, walking to a Bronx tale. We run into Giuseppe on the street. He tells me, hey, man, good to see you. I was supposed to do Pretty Woman, but I'm not doing it anymore. Uh, uh, uh. So now I know what they're looking for Got it. because mm -hmm. I ran into him and I'm like, this is the part I'm going in for. They want that young, scrappy, energetic person. Mm -hmm. That's me. So uh, <laughs> I can do that. I can do that. Right. Can do that. <laughs> so I went, I felt more confident going into the audition the next uh -huh. day because I knew what they were looking for. I knew who they based the role off of. Huh. Um, so it was kind of one of those meant to be things. And then, you know, now while I'm on the tangent, I'm just going to keep going. But uh, when I got the call for Newsies that I booked the Broadway show, that I booked it, um, I was in the ferry terminal, the Staten Island ferry mm -hmm. terminal. I was crossing back into Staten Island. And I had Let just- Let the river run. Immediately yeah. makes me think of Working Girl, Tess McGill. Do you know Working Girl, <laughs> no, right? No, I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, we're stopping this interview. I'm gonna do my interview. homework, I'm gonna do my homework. <laughs> this was like, this just happened to me. Teal Wicks was here Wait. and she's never seen burlesque. What? I'm like, oh, you're wait. in the Come share, on, Teal oh, you've seen burlesque. Yes. She's <laughs> probably seen Working Girl. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm Working Girls is a quintessential Staten Island movie. Just watch it later. Oh, all right. Now I'm, I'm really into Melanie it. Griffith. It's going to become a Broadway <laughs> musical. Cindy Lauper's writing a musical. Of course It's she your is. next gig. Yeah, of course. Working Great. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, no, it's fine. So, so you're at the ferry. So I got the call for Newsies that I booked the job when I was in the ferry terminal. And uh, 
I just, I remember running for the ferry because I'm always running to try and catch that ferry. Right. The doors are always shutting in my face. <laughs> so they shut my face. I sit down. Oh, got to wait a half hour, get the call from the agent. That was how it happened with Newsies. Fast forward three years, same thing happened for Pretty Woman. I was like running for the ferry, just miss it. I had just come wow. from the Pretty Woman audition. I sit down, I get the call, I see it's my agent's number. And I got chills. I'm always I'm always getting the chills. Uh -huh. But I got chills because I knew what I knew that it was a good thing because I was sitting in practically like in the same spot. Uh -huh. Wow. And I got that call. I'd run into Giuseppe the day before, a good friend of mine. And just the way it all happened, I got to see Adam in a Bronx tale, which was like so inspiring yeah. for me because it's a story about Italians. It's mm -hmm. a Broadway show about my people. Mm -hmm. So the way that everything lined up. And then, you know, being in that audition that day for Pretty Woman, dancing with Jerry, um, we did the audition, all the boys, and they said, I want uh, Tommy to stay and Nico de Jesus. So the two of us line. stay. So course line. I know. So just the two of us. I didn't know this is how this was going to go. So now I'm dancing with Jerry Mitchell. What? Like, <laughs> I never, I never, I met him a few times, but like, yeah. I was starstruck to say the least. And uh, we're dancing together for a half hour, we're partnering, and uh, I'm the type I get really nervous when I'm in situations like that. But I remember having a moment where I said, I talked myself out of it, I said, listen, this is your gig, this, there's a reason why you're here, relax, do your best, this is yours. And then I was like, in it. And cut to an hour and a half later, Missed the ferry, got the call. It was the best. Well, it's nice that they didn't make you wait. I love when. when oh people, my God, me! I'm I love so when you grateful. Right yes, away. thank gosh. Yeah. And the role did get it did expand once I came in. Yeah. It was there was only like he was only in like two scenes, and then the reaction, uh, you know, the Chicago audience they wanted more Julio, yeah. which is more great. More Julio. Uh, I was there in Chicago, it was and amazing. I said I yelled more Julio. <laughs> uh, so, what's your favorite moment? Hmm. In the show, I mean, I'm sure. It I changes. love getting to dance with Eric Anderson. He's amazing. <laughs> it's a great, so it's a great number. I love that banter with him together. Yeah. Um, it's hard to pick a favorite. I, I also know. love standing off on the side with Orfe. She's my girl, and it's, she's your girl. Oh my God, she's because she's we're the same. You know, she's New York just, too. Yeah, she's New York. Yeah, tough so. New York check. So uh, we stand on the side, and we're always just, we can communicate with a look, and we know exactly how it's going to go. <laughs> we're communicating on stage. It's the funniest thing. So I love getting to do it with her, and Sam, uh, everybody is Barks, amazing. Barks, Samantha Barks. Samantha yes. Barks, yeah. Yes. And so this um, week, Andy, Car Andy Carl and Orfe are on vacation. Yes, they you are. You can follow them on Instagram. You see them in Miami. <laughs> Uh, they're having a good time. They look fabulous. Uh, but uh, Adam Pascal is there for the week, which yep. is which is, was like sort of a nice surprise for legend. fans. Legend, okay. Back, a legend of the Nederlander. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ren obviously it was at the Nederlander originally. Yeah. So how's that going? That must be fun. I mean, it's what, Adam Pascal singing Brian Adams like it's yeah. a recipe for a good fit. success. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Uh, He's so good. He's so cool. It's one week. It's crazy. Yeah. He's in and out. So I feel like by the time like we are getting to you know know him and learn the new rhythms with him, he'll be gone. So mm -hmm. it's 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 a limited thing. It's very special. Um, it's not something to be missed. Um, yeah. I have my whole family. They're all coming back again to see <laughs> the show, uh, just to see him because I'm like, you know, you can't miss this. Yeah. It's it's something really yeah. special. This guy who created Roger. Yep. in this amazing historical theater is back here doing this role, mm -hmm. Edward Lewis. Uh, it's it's perfect, it really is. It's uh, so it's interesting. Really... Obviously a lot of Broadway musicals are being created based on movie titles mm -hmm. or based on uh, people's songbooks and yeah. famous you know, pop music. Um, some of them, it's interesting, like certain titles don't necessarily click with audiences. Audiences really love Pretty Woman. They Especially really want people to from see Staten the, Island. What do you think that is? <laughs> they love it. Those bridge and tunnel folks. Yeah, what, they what do you love think, it. What do you think that is? Is it, is it your people? It's your, yeah, it's my people. Yeah. That's the best thing. You know, I'm so grateful that I'm I'm from Staten Island because my family gets to see me in shows. It's not hard for them. I have people coming every single day that I know. They're like, we're here from the dance studio. We're here from the, the beauty salon. They're all here. And I'm like, great, come backstage. What a <laughs> gift. Um, but people love this movie. There's yeah. a reason why people love this movie. And uh, Jerry, the they whole team, They clearly just Paula, didn't love Julia Roberts and Richard Gere, no, though. They it's love the, the story. Movie, and yeah. the... It's a Cinderella story. It's a yeah. classic mm -hmm. story. It's... There's so many iconic moments that people, and you know, I gotta say, like Jerry and Paula, 
they did this movie justice and more. It's a really hard thing to make a movie musical mm -hmm. and make the audience walk out happy. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't give them those iconic costumes, those wigs, those right. lines that they look for, they're gonna walk out unhappy. Right. You know, not to, n no disrespect to Ghost, I'm just gonna say this, but I remember when they when Ghost came out, I saw it, I loved it. Yeah. But everyone in the hair salon, my whole family has a hair salon, <laughs> they were all saying, I love Ghost, but why didn't she have that haircut? <laughs> That's what they said. Why didn't she You're have right. that haircut? It's so funny. People care about that kind of stuff. <laughs> we give them that blonde wig, we give them the, the blue skirt, the, <laughs> the red dress, it's all there. And they updated to make it more appropriate yeah. for today's time, yeah. you know. The movie was made in I think eighty nine or ninety. Times have changed, and mm -hmm. they they made it. They made the story work mm -hmm. now, and it's a story about female empowerment. It's it's the best. And Julia, it's really great. Uh, and Julia, <laughs> and I love the songs. I love that cast album. I'm really into it. I know. I'm into Brian it. Adams. It's the best. You Brian know? Adams. It's perfect because he is. You know, that's when his music was the biggest. Is yeah. is that time era that yeah. Pretty Woman took place? So who better to write? A musical that takes place in 8990 then Brian Adams who writes that 90s pop rock it's a perfect fit how old were you when you started dancing 14 at Starstruck wow. Dance Studio I wow. gotta give them a shout out Starstruck in in Staten Island yeah yeah the best yeah yeah you still there's like a statue of you there now or <laughs> there's so many people photo that at are, least, or? <laughs> there's so many people that are like out there doing things my uh my cousin, my little cousin came from the studio. She was in Matilda on Broadway. She closed the show as oh. a um, lavender. Mm -hmm. And then my other cousin dances on Lip Sync Battle. Oh. My friend just made a song uh, with Fat Man Scoop. They're all doing stuff. It's wow. backup dancing. It's not just about it's, you. There, there's <laughs> a lot of us. I wish I could. No, yeah, but that's a good thing. It's good. <laughs> hey, Kayla. Yes. What are the fans saying online? They got some questions. So George said, uh, loved your performance in Chicago. What was the biggest change between the tryout and Broadway? Mm -hmm. The biggest change? It's hard to say what the biggest mm -hmm. change is. The show is truly changing every day. Mm -hmm. I feel better about my show than I have yesterday or the day before mm. yesterday last mm -hmm. night's show felt better than the day before it really feels better and better for me because this show it's in it's an intimate story mm -hmm. you know you're telling a love story and what a is there a more perfect theater to do that than in the Nederlander and 1100 seat house? It's right. an intimate setting. It is an amazing really experience see. seeing a Broadway musical in such a small yes house. it's necessary that's why mm -hmm. Chicago the biggest change the is the house. The yeah. theater was huge. Yes. When we moved to the Nederlander, completely worked. It completely mm. changed the whole entire thing. Wow. Um, we say it again. The theater was what? What? Huge. Small, huge. 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 <laughs> big mistake. Big, huge. huge. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Uh, Justine wants to know what your pre-show routine is and how do you prepare yourself to get into character? Oh my gosh, I love this, so love this story, <laughs> this song. This is what I'm going to talk about, my favorite song right now. <laughs> so uh, I, j my friend Caitlin just introduced me to this new song. Well, it's not new, it's from 2015, but I just found <laughs> it. It's called Cut the Mozzarella, oh. and I'm obsessed yeah. with it. So the way that I get ready for the show is I literally blast the song in the dressing room. I drive all the boys nuts. I go crazy. Crazy dancing around them. I'm doing flips. I'm what? dancing. There's room in there to do flips. We make room. No, <laughs> there's no room, but we make room. All right. And uh, cutting the mozzarella, it's mu it's a lot like the fist pump, but it's you're cutting the mozzarella, so oh, it's blade it. hands. <laughs> so that's the new move. That's what's the new thing in the needle nice. the voice dressing room. Cut the mozzarella. Wow. Okay. Cut that's my that's my right. warm up, okay. my ritual. <laughs> All right, I'm into the it. The whole every the whole cast is backstage going cut the mozzarella. Wow. It's great. <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> this can be our last question. LB wants to know what is one show that you would love to revive and be in on Broadway? Great question, LB. Mm -hmm. I think I know him too. <laughs> He's one of my students. I love him. Um, LB, oh, what what was the question again? Sorry. Which musical it, do you want to revive? What musical do I want to revive? Did you grow up liking musicals? Guys and Dolls, like, I guess, yeah. Guys and Dolls? I didn't grow up liking musicals, honestly. I was going to say, if you started at 14, I'm yeah, kind of yeah. like, what? I went to LaGuardia High School, so uh -huh. that's how I kind of got introduced to theater. Okay. Um, but I didn't, That it wasn't, my, my parents did take me to shows, but to be honest with you, I wasn't like, yeah. I wasn't into it. Right. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I left high school that I started auditioning, okay. booked mm -hmm. Newsies, 
Um, Guys and Dolls is a dream role of mine. Uh, before that, before Sky a chorus or Nathan? line. Nathan. Nathan. Okay. Yeah. Nathan Detroit. Okay. Nathan Detroit. I got one. some time to go, but yeah, one, one day one. it'll be so Maybe, great. Maybe um, uh, like Orphe could be your Adelaide. Can you imagine? That'd I would, be different. I would die. I don't know. Something you could work on in the wings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we actually, I met Orfe doing a show. We will, we played love interest in it. What was that? It was called uh, Life of a Mob Wife. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that I come on. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they were like, we got to get Tommy yeah. Brocco. And Orfe. Get... <laughs> and Orfe. I know. Insane. <laughs> so uh, Guys and yeah. Dolls. So Guys and Dolls. That's before fun. Before Chorus Line, I would have said that. But now that that's happened, I would say Guys and Dolls for would sure. You, would you like to do a longer run of a Chorus Line? Would you like to do that? I could do that every I night. I would like to do it, but it's really hard. Yeah, and, you sure. know, it would. It's like... It's, Newsies it's, wasn't? Y- your body gets used to that muscle memory. Okay. There's something about standing on the line and presenting yourself, mm-hmm. looking out at an audience for two hours that there's no feeling like it. It's so raw and vulnerable. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's that's a tough one. But I would, I would, yes. The answer is always yes. I would love to do that show right. as a long run. Right. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's good. Thank it's a good time. So I'm much. having a great time. I know. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. I'm happy that uh, that that Julio came your way. Julio, Julio, uh, whoever. Julio, Juli- <laughs> Julio, <No>. Julio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy. Uh, and and you know, you are generally one of those people. Genuinely, not generally, one of those people that really like. I remember when I saw Newsies, I was like, "Look at that kid!" Aww, you know. And it's thanks. nice one to see to see this happen to you. So thank you. Thank you for coming I'm in. Grateful. Come back. Come back soon. Yep. Hey, Thanks, hey, guys. Warren, go see uh, Pretty Woman. It's at the Nederlander. If you go this week, you can see Adam Pascal. If you go next week, you can see Andy Carl. These are both great options. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us in a podcast version by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Bobby Cotton Thornton and Alex Pracken about their upcoming Gutenberg concert at Green Room 42.